Hello and welcome to Scrappy Loom Sewing. I'm JC Joellen and today we're going to work on a faux cathedral windows quilt block. I love the cathedral windows quilt but it's very time consuming so for now I've got to do something a little faster because I work so maybe I'll try the traditional method once I retire. Um, it looks like this. It really gives a good replica of the cathedral windows quilt it you know really a good illusion of the cathedral windows quilt um but the whole thing is sewn by machine so it's a lot faster um and what you will need is some starch i take the starch i spray it into a little cup a little cup for your starch let the bubbles die down and then we're going to use that to turn the edges of the circles um you will need some four and three four cents fabric scraps or cuts of fabric. You will need your fabric for your for some seven inch diameter circles and you'll need a little brush to paint your starch on. You need a four and three fourths inch template square and a seven inch diameter template circle. These are made from freezer paper and if you're unfamiliar with how to make these just go to my uh, Caddy Wampus quilt video and it'll show you step by step how to make a template out of freezer paper. So you will need your four and three fourths inch blocks for the center piece here. And you'll need your seven inch circles for the outer segment of the block. So let's get started. First thing I'll do is um, cut out my circles. And the way I do that is I'll take my layers of fabric, I've got four here, four layers, and I press my seven inch diameter circle onto the top layer. I use a rotary cutter, so I don't pin or anything once I've got this pressed. The, the, the freezer paper makes it stick to the fabric, so you can see it's stuck on there. And then I just take my rotary cutter and cut around it. Um, you got to be very careful with the rotary cutter because they're very sharp, and I'm not using a ruler, so it would be easy to hop over there by accident and cut your finger. So if you're not comfortable with that, I recommend that you pin it down through all the layers so that you can lift it without shifting the pieces around and then cut with the scissors. But to make it quick, I use my rotary cutter. And then I just cut around. It doesn't even have to be perfect because the template is gonna make it perfect. I just want to make sure that I've got at least an eighth of an inch outside of the template. Ideally a quarter of an inch. And then I've got my circles like this. And I just stack up as many as I need or as many as I want to do at that time. And move on to the next section. After I've got my circles cut out, then I would take one of the circles and on the wrong side attach that 7 inch diameter with an iron. Press it down. No steam. And once it's pressed down, which this one is, I take my starch and my little brush and paint all the way around the edges. Trying not to get it on the template. I start on the outer edge of the fabric and work my way in. Now once I've done that all the way around, then I take my hot iron and I turn the edges over and press. And that will give me a finished edge circle. Just go all the way around like that and just press until the starch is dry. Once I've done that, you end up with a circle like this, edges all the way around, turned under. I just pull my template out.
In addition to the four inch squares of fabric, you'll want to get some four inch squares of batting. I mean, four and three fourths inch squares of batting or whatever size block you're doing. This just happens to be a four and three fourths inch that I'm using and a seven inch diameter circle, but you could change those numbers, those dimensions. And you'll put the uh, batting in the center here of your circle. I'm not real exact. If you want to be exact, you could fold your circle. You can find the center of your circle by folding it in half and then half again. And then doing the same thing with your square and then centering them. I just eyeball it. And once I've got them centered, I then put my uh, fabric square, my 3 4 inch square. on top of the batting and then I will fold my edges of my circle over making sure to keep the edges turned under and press while I'm pressing that I'm folding on my other, oh, folding over my other side you can use steam here And then I'll do this for all four sides. And that's how you end up with your square block. Which is here. After I've got the edges turned over, I pin them in place. I just stick one pin in the center. The fewer pins I can get away with, the faster the process. So I try to use as few pins as I as possible. Can't always do that, but where I can, I do do that. All right. So I just take a pin, stick it in the center of each of these folds. To hold it in place. And you end up with a little block that looks like this. Next, I'll just take this to the sewing machine and I will stitch using a zigzag, a small zigzag, along each edge here. And that gives me blocks that look like this. Now after I've got all the blocks that I need, I stitch them together in nine patches. And the way I do that is I just butt them up against each other. Like this. I take it to the sewing machine. That fits better right there. Take it over to the sewing machine and I just zigzag. Holding these two pieces together. I just zigzag right along that edge. Right down here. Right down this edge here. Then I'll take the next two, do the same thing with those, zigzag right down the edge there, and then I'll put these together and zigzag across there, making sure to line the, the corners up so that it comes out nice and neat there. And you end up with a nine patch that looks like this. And you just sew your nine patches together and get, get your quilt. If you do it with the batting underneath here, once you've stitched these together, you're done. But the way I'm doing this one is without the batting. And then once I've got my whole quilt top together, I'm going to attach a flannel back. And then I'll just pull the flannel over the edges just a hair, about a quarter of an inch over the edges, turned under to finish off the edges. 
And that's how you do the faux cathedral window block. At least this faux cathedral window block. There's a number of them out there. Um, this is just a really simple one, though. Can't get any easier than that one. Um, so I hope you enjoyed that. And I hope to see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell so you'll get notified. Um, God bless and hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.